Is there anything more iconic to Seattle than the Space Needle? I tell you one thing, at the base of the needle, there's something else, a different kind of marker inside this building. You may have noticed this if you took your kids to the playground. I'm gonna see what's in this building with Doug Gibbons. And Doug Gibbons, you say that you are sort of what? What's your title? I'm like the cable guy for earthquakes. We go fix the sensors. So why are we going in here? Well, this station down here at the base of the Space Needle is very important for monitoring ground motion in central Seattle here. And so we're gonna kickstart it. So we have seismometers in here? Yes. Okay, well, let's take a look. This is a seismic record or a seismogram. And Doug, we're gonna do a stomp test uh, and actually see the vibrations our footsteps make on this uh, sensor, correct? That's right, this station is so sensitive that can it can detect me just stomping up and down and it quickly goes off scale. All right, so that is your stomp. So it looks like the scale changes depending on the level of vibration. Yeah, these instruments can record up to four Gs. And so most earthquakes, of course, aren't anywhere near that strong. Okay. And neither is the cultural noise that happens around here at the playground. Uh, with children playing or trucks and, and machinery driving by. Okay, so 4Gs, that is a uh, level of the gravity. Yeah, four point. times the force four of times. gravity. Okay, and then cultural noise, is that what you called it? Yeah. Cultural noise. Oh. Most of our stations in urban areas get a lot of cultural noise because we're at places like fire stations or elementary schools. Okay, and cultural noise essentially vibrations made by humans yep. or human activity. Yep. And the seismometers, correct, mm -hmm. they can distinguish between what is man-made and what is Certainly. Our cultural. system okay. our system back at the University of Washington can distinguish between cultural noise and an earthquake almost instantaneously. We can record and analyze an earthquake in about three seconds. So we'll easily know and quickly know the difference between cultural noise and a real earthquake. Okay, this is cool. All right, so we don't have a piece of paper and that little thing that draws on it. Everything's digital these days. Everything is digital much, much faster. <laughs> of course, and we don't need to waste paper. And then we go underneath and then this is the battery and this is the actual seismometer, correct? Yep, yep. that's the seismometer bolted to the foundation of this little building. And you say there's a little piece of metal in there suspended by springs that actually vibrates? That's basically Basically the concept, there's a, a mass held in place by an electric current and when shaking happens, that mass is displaced and the voltage changes to keep that mass in place. Okay, and then you measure that and uh, those vibrations are recorded. And it's important that we have not just one, but a whole bunch of these. A lot of them. The more we have, the better we can monitor earthquakes and the better we can make ground motion models and look at what's beneath our feet in terms of what is underneath us. What type of ground is underneath our feet? Okay, and uh, we are actually adding more as we speak. This is a site in Forks uh, that you're adding more of these seismometers to, correct? Yeah, there's a very cool experiment we are just initiating out in Forks that is adding 10 stations over a small area out at an airport. And this is one of those stations? That's what one of those stations looks like with the solar panels and okay. the instruments in that white vault. It's about six feet down underneath our feet. Okay. And what that's gonna allow us to do potentially is visualize the subduction zone. Okay, and these are the stations at the airport there? Yes. Okay, and then essentially you can use, uh, you can process how the um, seismic waves are refracted through mm. the Earth's crust? Yeah, we can, the look shallow at, crust. we can look at different densities of material that it's traveling through and make guesses or estimations on exactly what type of material is down there because seismic waves travel through material of different densities at okay. different speeds. So okay. we are super accurately timing the arrival of seismic waves at these stations. And by doing that, we can get a picture of what's underneath our feet. Okay, so you're essentially using these tools to draw a picture of the structure mm -hmm. underneath. You can map out faults and all sorts of things. Yeah, there's yeah. 700 sensors in the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, all okay. of them feeding information back to the University of Washington. But in real time, it's being analyzed at the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network and being fed in not only to our real-time processing system, but also the Shake Alert Earthquake Early Warning System. Okay, so all of the data from all these sensors all combines so that I can get an alert if there's an earthquake. 100%. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's really cool. Uh, anything else that you think is neat with this? 
Um, this data is available on pnsn.org. Okay. We're a publicly funded organization, and mm -hmm. so anything we record, you can find on the internet, whether that's here at the Seattle Center or up on Mount Rainier. Okay, and this is cool because it's right at Seattle Center. We're at the base of the Space Needle, but you'll find these sensors all over, all over the place. All over Washington, Oregon. A lot of schools, a lot of fire stations, public okay. utility buildings, and then out in the forest and up on the sides of our volcanoes. Okay, this is pretty neat. Thanks for showing me around this seismometer. You're right? very well. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to see a few more in the future. Yeah. Cheers.